Hello, friends and neighbors. I hope you're well. My name is Rich Brown. Welcome to the Brownstone. Thanks for stopping by. Um, the plan here is to help you become the best musician that you possibly can. Uh, and today, I want to talk about time and rhythm and really making sure that your ability to groove is as sharp and has as finely tuned as it possibly can be. I have a series of exercises that are all centered around playing with a metronome that I think will change your life. Huh? I think so. Let's see. Um, these are exercises that I've developed over the years and um, I found that a few of my students have difficulty with these mainly because time hasn't been a real focus in their uh, development. So, at the risk of insulting your musical intelligence, I want to start at the very beginning. I mean the bare bones beginnings of learning how to play in time. What I've done is I have a metronome set up at 75 BPM. And all we're going to do is count the quarter notes. Here's the plan. 75 BPM on my metronome. I've got eight bars set. All we're going to do is we're going to count the quarter notes the first time. Second time we're going to do the exercise again and we're going to count the eighth notes, one and two and three and four. We're going to do the exercise a third time, and this time we're going to count the sixteenth note subdivision. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. All right? So here we go. Simple. Eight bars, counting the quarter note. Here we go. Very beginning. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. How'd you do? Were you right on point? Did you move ahead of the beat? Did you fall behind? These are important questions you have to ask yourself. Because these are the essentials. Before we can move on to do the actual uh, metronome exercises, we have to make sure that our time is on point. Okay, let's do this again. This time I'm going to count the eighth note. One and two and three and four. Here we go. Eight bars. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and you got it. Huh? You still with me? How's your eighth note? Is it happening? Is it in the pocket? Is it a little ahead? Is it a little behind? Let's try this one more time. This time we're going to do the sixteenth note subdivision. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So how'd you do? Again, very important making sure that we are right in line with the quarter note, with the eighth note, with the sixteenth note. Once you've got that, if you feel comfortable with that, let's move on. If you're having a little trouble, 
then hang out at this part of the video for a while. Or just practice on your own with a metronome. 75 BPM is a nice comfortable tempo, not too fast, not too slow. And really make sure that you are right in line with everything that's going on. That has to happen before we take it to the bass, which is what we're gonna do right now. Now, here's what I wanna do. Um, the way that I like to practice these exercises uh, is a little bit different and kind of cool. I'm using the Tempo app on my, uh, on my iPad. It's a great metronome. And um, this app, along with many of the other apps that you can download, gives you the, the, gives you the ability to turn off certain beats in the bar. Now, what I like to do is turn off beats one and three. Now, the reason why is because once I do that, I only hear two and four. And that is something that I think we in the Western world, Western world have all become very much accustomed to because every day of our lives, we're hearing music with a backbeat, a strong two and four pulse. And I think playing to that in the practice room can be much more organic than playing to four clicks on a metronome. So here's what I like to do. This is the first level of the exercise. And again, it's very simple, but it can be, it can be tricky. I'm turning off beats one and three, as I said, and what I'm going to do is play one and three. Pick a note on the fingerboard. I usually play G at the third fret of the E string, and I just play one and three. So I'm gonna do that for eight bars. Here we go. Huh? Not bad, right? It's kind of tricky. Um, I could say that this is an exercise for beginners, but is it? Is it really? Because this can be kind of kind of tough. Now, the reason why I was so insistent upon having you count the sixteenth note subdivision is um, is because of the next le the next level of the exercise. Because now things are going to get a little more challenging. What I want to do is I want to play each one of those notes uh, in those beats, associated with each of those beats. So I started on one and three. Now what I want to be able to do is shift by a sixteenth note and play the E of one and the E of three. So here's how we do that. If I'm going to think about it, I have to think about the 16th note subdivision. So I can put the metronome back on. One, two, three, four. And then count the 16th note subdivision against what's going on here. Three, four. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a... And when I'm doing that, as I'm doing that, I'm thinking about all the E's that I have to play. The E of one and the E of three. 2e and a 3e and a 4e and a 1e and a 2e and a 3e and a 4e and a 1e and a 2e and a 3e and a 4e and a... So now I want to play those notes. Something like this. Tricky, right? But you'll get it. You'll get it. Uh, if you want, you can go straight to the eighth note, which will be the next note in the sequence. But sometimes, you know, obviously switching from quarter note to eighth note is a lot easier than switching from quarter note to sixteenth note. So let's try moving to the eighth note. 
How about I start by playing the one and three, and then I'll move to the ands, the eighth notes. The upbeats. Here we go. So I'm going to start with the quarter note. Now the thing about the exercise is I don't want to move from where I am. I don't want to switch to the next note until this is feeling comfortable and grooving. And at this point, it is to me. So now I can move to the eighth note. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Right? Hopefully you're still with me. Hopefully that's feeling good. So now I feel like I can move on to um, the next beat, which is going to be the last beat associated with the quarter note, uh, the ah of the bar. So now I'll play the ah of one and the ah of three. So I have to hear that first. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one D and a two E and a three E and a four E and one E and a three E and a 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 This one this one is the hardest one but when you get it Feels really good. Uh. Uh. Mm. One. Kind of cool, right? That's the exercise. I'm going to leave it at that for now because there are many levels to this exercise. But I think if I leave you with that for, I don't know, let's say a week, maybe a little longer, depending on how fast I can churn these videos out, um, the other levels of the exercise are going to blow your mind. It's going to blow your mind. I see this as being the first in a series of videos all dedicated to metronome study because as I said in the beginning uh, I've developed these exercises over the last few years and there are many levels we've only hit the first level so um, maybe next week I'll come back and give you the next level for now this is a lot to sit with and a lot to work with uh, so I hope you are able to uh, have some fun with it listen I got to tell you, uh, I'm very new at this. This, I know backwards and forwards. I'm not new at this. This, I'm very new at this. So I really want to try to develop this channel. And um, obviously, I'm going to need your help to make that happen. If you like this video, uh, share it with as many people as possible. Like it so that I know that you do appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel so that I know that I have some, uh, some interest in what we're doing here. The other thing I really wanted to stress has to do with practice and development and keeping sight of the goal. A lot of times when we practice and we, we learn new ideas, there's a process and the process can be very difficult and discouraging and uh, you know it can make you just want to give up you can just say oh my god this stuff is kicking my ass like way too much um, so when you do play these exercises 
and and they do present a challenge and you struggle and you know you start to hate music and you want to put the bass down forever before you do that finish the work and then very important play some music that makes you uh remember why you picked the instrument up in the first place put on a motown tune and just play along and have some fun do something that makes you remember how much fun it is to play this instrument because you know the stuff that i'm going to give you uh, on this channel is going to uh it's going to push you a little bit and it's going to make you do some work which is what i want it's important for your development um but I don't want you to lose sight of the fact that you love this instrument as much as I do. Uh, so I think it's very important to find some part, some part of your practice routine where you just go back and you just play some music and have fun playing music. These exercises can be fun too, but when you're just learning them, when you're just getting into them, chances are it's not a whole lot of fun getting your butt kicked up and down the street. So, um, do have fun with these if you can. And, uh, and if they do make you work a little bit too hard, that's cool too. You got to enjoy the struggle and you got to remember why you love this instrument. That's going to be that for today, my friends. I hope you enjoyed the video. As I said earlier, and as everyone says at the end of all of their videos, like, and subscribe share this video with your friends and i will see you in the next one hit that notification bell to let you know when the next video comes out maybe like a week or so until then have fun thanks for stopping by i appreciate you visiting the brownstone i'll see you next time peace and love